Uh, hi again. I'd like to uh, continue with the weather app here. And um, in the last video, I downloaded some helper apps to help us with network stuff. So this is going to, HDTV task is going to go out and get data on the internet, and Swifty JSON is going to convert our JSON data that we download into something that's more usable in Swift. Okay? So what we need to do next is we need to, um, you know, have a URL to connect to the internet. And I talked about this in the last video, and if you remember, if we go to open weather map and we go to their API, so I did slash API, you can see this is the API they have, and we're going to be using this current weather data API. And when I go in here, you can see they give us some some URLs to work with. And the URL here is, you know, app open weather map data 2.5 weather, blah, 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 right? So if I click on that, you can see this is the data that we get. And so this is the URL that we want to use. The thing is, this has a little bit of stuff on the end after the question mark. So really, all we need is this first part before the question mark, okay? So um, what we're going to do is I'm going to copy that and go to my Xcode project. And just to make it easy to work with, I'm going to make a variable here called open weather URL, okay? And then it'll be a string which has the weather data in it, right, the URL. And um, if you want, you can make an open weather um, API. So that'll be your API key, and you can put your API key here. Let's we'll put some numbers in there, right? And then we'll use these variables down below here to get this so we don't have to type that whole thing out, okay? And I used let here because these are values that aren't going to change. They're fixed, right? So uh, let's try it now. So the first thing we need to do is we need to set up our HTTP request. So I'm going to make a variable here called request, and then I'll set it in set it to HTTP uh, request, or no, HTTP task. There we go, right? And so this is coming from the HTTP task class that we've imported here, this file, okay? And when we make a task, we got to assign to the, to the request object um, some system to serialize the data, like the response data and, you know, the data that we send. So, or the request data. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say request dot um, request serializer equals, and I'm going to use the JSON request serializer here, okay? And this is coming from this other file up here, request serializer, serializer right? And then let's do it again. So we'll say request and this time it's going to be response serializer, okay? And then we'll get the JSON response serializer here, and we're set. Okay, so now we're going to make the request, okay? So we'll say request.get. And instead of typing all this out, I'm going to type the get, wait for the code hints to um, show me the the option that I want, which is this one, right? And then I'll hit return, okay? And then I'm going to go through here and fill in each one of these little blue areas here that are highlighted. You know, it's pretty much telling me, like, that's data I need to fill in. So uh, this first one here, URL string, well, that's our open weather URL right here. So I'll copy that and uh, paste it there. And then... Um, parameters right here. This is a dictionary, okay? And this is going to be the data that we send to the server making the request. And if you recall, um, it's a little hard to see here. This is kind of small, but it said there's, you know, on, on this sample request, you can see it says question mark, and then it's got Q equals London UK. Well, this is called the query string, and the query string is the, the parameter data that we're sending to the server, and it's always in name value pair. So, so the Q is sort of the key, and then equals 
you know, follows with the value, right? So the value follows the equal sign. So in our case, if we wanted to use these values here, um, we would use Q colon, and then we could put in, you know, London comma UK. Or actually, it'd probably work okay just with London or just the city name, right? So we'll put the value in there. And, you know, really in our case right here, we don't really want, you know, London. What we want is we want to get the city name that you set, right? So what we're going to do is we're going we're gonna to pass that along later, right? I'll, I'll come back to that, right? But we're going to put this, we're going to include the city name here and replace this in the future. Okay, but for right now, we'll test it. And if our, if our app is working, it should not get the data from San Francisco. It should get the data from London instead. Okay, so now the last bit right here is the success. So, you know, this is going to try and load some data off the internet. And if it's not successful, you know, it might be successful, might not be. It's hard to tell until it's happened. So we need our program needs to be, you know, um, needs to be aware that those two things can happen there. And there's two options on the end here. There's success and there's failure, right? And both of these are a block. So this is a block of code that runs when the request is a success. And this is a block that runs when the success, when the the code, you know, when the request is a failure, right? So to make this work, I'm going to click on the blue area here, so it's darker blue, and then I'll hit return. And what'll happen is the computer will sort of decode that option there into a default request, right? And so it kind of set this up with the curly brackets and filled in some of the stuff for me. But then it kind of says like, hey, you still need to fill in this blue area here and this blue area here. So for response here, I'm just going to make a variable called response, and that'll be the response that comes from the server. And this should be a type of HTTP um, response. Okay, so I'll put that there. And then it should say, you know, it should have the arrow here saying, you know, that this returns nothing because it says return void, right? So this is return void. And then it says in. And then after the in, we have all of the code that this, um, that this block is going to execute when, uh, when, you know, this response happens, right? So when this block, when it's a success, when we load data from the internet and it's a success, then this is the block that's going to run and the code that's going to happen is going to be right here, okay? So just for testing, I'm going to put print response, okay? And then down here, we got failure, right? So um, in the case of a failure, we're going to do this here. And this is another block, but it takes two parameters. It'll, it'll receive two parameters, returns nothing, okay? So I'll, I'll click on that to highlight it. You can see it's like a light blue, and when I click, it's a darker blue. And then I'll hit return, and then there's, a, you know, it kind of fills that out for me. And then there's two blocks here, two little parameters to fill in. So the first one is an error, so I'll say you are an error, and this should be type ns error. And then I guess there's a response that can come with the error, right? So we'll say um, response again. And I think this guy can be um, type HTTP response. Maybe he had the question mark, so maybe that one. I'm, I'm not the um, computer science guy, you probably realized. But uh, I think this is an optional, so we'll put the question mark there, because I think I remember seeing the, the question mark on it. You know, and if, it, if there's an error, it'll probably tell me if I'm doing something wrong, so I won't worry about it. Um, so anyway, so now what's going to happen if there's an error? Well, why don't, for now, why don't we print the error message? So I'll say error, um, and errors have a description string, so that'll, that'll tell us what the error was, hopefully. So I'll put print line description, right? Okay, so this isn't going to be completely functional yet, but right now our view controller calls load weather, so it should call this, and then it should start this request. And when the request comes through, it'll be either a um, a you know success, and we'll print the response, or it'll be an error, and it'll print the description string for the error. Okay, so let's let's test it. So I'll click the the test button up here and uh, bring up the uh, 
the simulator. Oh, so there's my weather there. And it doesn't put the weather in here yet. We have to still do that. But you can see down here, I got my response. And it says weather mockup, you know, one dot HTTP response. So there's the response. And it looks like everything's functioning. Okay. And so that would, would have been the response right here. Okay. So we'll, we'll finish this up in another couple of videos. We'll just do it step by step. Okay. But, but if you got the same response there, then yours should be working.